The health secretary has insisted that striking doctors can't be allowed to switch the NHS off as medics on the picket line have refused to call off the longest strike in NHS history. Victoria Atkins has again called on junior doctors to come back to work as her industrial action enters the third day, with the health service grappling with a wave of COVID, flu and norovirus cases. Junior doctors have held firm, though. The BMA, the British Medical Association, has rejected more than 20 emergency requests for its members to cross the picket line on patient safety grounds. NHS bosses have now announced that they will log all evidence of the harm to patients caused by doctors refusing to help struggling hospitals. This strike-inducing paralysis of service will not only be limited to the country's hospitals, Unfortunately, London is going to come to a, a standstill next week as the underground staff walk out over pay for the best part of the week. London Mayor Sadiq Khan has come under fire for not using his powers to provide a minimum service on the tube during the week-long strike. <coughs> <sighs> sigh. Massive sigh. Yeah. Um, on the, on the sort of positive front, I think it's very good development that NHS bosses are now going to try to record and identify what is the impact on patients of these strikes. Because once we have that data, even if the data is a bit shaky, and we can see that X number of people suffered in Y way as a result of these doctors <coughs> taking the action they have, I think that could really change the debate around this, especially if it is possible to show that there has been an increase in excess deaths, mortality rates in hospitals during this period. When hospitals started publishing their mortality data um, over the week, so you could see a pattern and it showed that there was a spike in mortality over the weekend, it really helped our understanding, even though NHS bosses haven't done enough about it, as to the impact on staffing levels on patient safety. And we need to see that, I think. But surely we know that without a shadow of a doubt that it, it, it must have an effect We do, on but being able to nail safety. that uh, yes, matters. Yes, I, I, I agree. Think. I think that, that Victoria Atkins, though, the, the health secretary, is not, is not being very good, I would suggest. <laughs> I at, think we can all agree with that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. At negotiation, because it, the whole point about negotiation, it seems to me, is surely, is that you, is that you give a little and you look amenable. You don't mm. say you know, I'm not talking to you until you do this. That somehow does not seem like a sensible way to be operating. She's echoing I just... the way that Steve Barkley did things as well. Mm. Yes, but I'm, what I'm saying is they don't it's seem no to good. be doing the right thing. And mm. also, the BMA now, the BMA Union, is it the BMA Union, isn't it? Or yeah, the BMA, um, BMA yeah. Is, <laughs> it has said that the 35% is not absolutely categorically what they're after. They're after it moving towards the 35%. So, so uh, with Victoria Atkins banging on and saying, you know, we're never going to give them the 35%, well, they've already kind of accepted that. That is but not going to happen. But, but they're saying a bit more like the Scottish system, the, the Scottish deal, which is that they've, what they've said is 12% now, and then we'll move it towards so that it goes back to 2008 in terms of... I'm not against it, it seems to me... <laughs> oh, oh, oh. This side of the room got a bit excited. I'm just going to say, it seems to me that um, the Conservatives now, the government now, are treading water mm. and just actually trying to make this the next government's problem, a Labour government problem, because they don't seem to be really honing in on what can we do to get these people back to work? And that would be getting around the negotiation table, like you said, realising that actually they've moved away from asking for 35%. What they want is a pay increase that brings them back to 2008 levels uh, and uh, along with the line of inflation and everything. And that could be around 26%, 27%. Obviously, that is a huge pay rise. Mm. Uh, and they have had an 8.8% increase with an additional 3.3% this year. Uh, and they want it on a sliding ooh. scale. But if I really, really wanted the NHS to not be on its knees, practically on its face, I would be really, but really eager to get no, back wait, 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 wait. Under Labour government, this wouldn't happen. The BMA yeah. are extremely left-wing, unfortunately. People at the top of BMA yeah. are left-leaning. Oh, this 100%. is a, a fight against 100%. the Tories. This is mm. if once Keir Starmer's in, I bet they'll take twenty percent. I'm almost certain. Of oh, it. without a doubt. Yeah, without and I'm, I'm not against these guys striking. 
the, it's up to them to, to with, withdraw their, their labour. But what I'm against is the fact they're asking, starting at 35% and trying to negotiate down but still towards that. If they were striking saying we want 15%, then I'd be OK with it. But the, the greed they're showing to me is unacceptable. But I, but I think, you see, you're, you're spot on there with identifying that they're making this a political debate as opposed to a genuine mm. uh, element of concern for yeah. doctors and what they're paid. But if the doctors were really serious, and, and I'm critical, actually, both of the health secretary, who I think is a useless negotiator, but also mm -hmm. the head of the BMA who's politicised this, because we really should be looking at how we operate. Doctors, uh, and in particular the NHS, is extremely old-fashioned in terms of how it operates. It offers, operates nine till five, and it assumes yeah. that that's when you're yeah, going yeah, to be most yeah. ill. Yeah. Well, and at most weekends, people, it's, it's and often... At weekends. So no, we have, at weekends, it's often not enough cover. Yes, exactly. Yeah. But we have a seven-day requirement for healthcare. One, because we're ill when we're ill, and two, because we've got such a backlog. So turn it into a seven-day service, change your ways of working, then ask for more money so that we can deliver more productivity, then it means that the taxpayer doesn't end up basically footing the bill when none of us, I don't think, and anybody of, you know, you're all watching and, and looking, have you received a 35% pay percent, but, percent but, uh, review? Oh, no. they, and they have been very successful, haven't they, in terms of surgery, for example, where they've proved fairly recently that they can actually carry, operate just almost simultaneously and, and, and without having, and they're doing it much faster. So there are ways of doing it.